Hey everyone. So recently I got to visit some family members of mine in Westchester, New York, and we got to talking about Buckout Road, which is one of my personal favorite scary places. So I just wanted to share some legends about that with you. So I will put the link to the website that has all of these legends in the description box of this video. All credit for this goes to them. It's bedofnails.com. Urban Legends Buckout Road, Haunted Westchester County, New York. So the first legend is native folklore. The legends begin in the 1600s. There have been stories surrounding the Buckout Road area for decades, and in one case, as early as the late 1600s. Native American legend claimed that a great white deer visited the area during a full moon and would bring good fortune and success to the person who saw it. Natives traveled from as far away as the Great Lakes in hopes of seeing it. A native known as Indian Dan returned once a month from 1805 to 1866 to seek out the great white deer. There is a newer road in the Buckout Road vicinity known as White Deer Lane, named after this legend. The second story is the infamous Albino House. The story is that if you stop in front of a particular red house on Buckout Road and beep your car horn three times, then flesh-eating albinos will attack you. As ridiculous as this sounds, people have sworn this has happened to them. The chance of being an albino is about 1 in 17,000, when two carriers of the albinism gene have a child together, that child has a 1 in 4 chance of receiving two albinism genes. Thus, a family of albinos is unlikely, but possible. The chances of that same albino family, however, being cannibals, is even more unlikely, if not absurd. Regardless, folks have honked their horns in front of this house until it ultimately burned down and was subsequently demolished in early 2009. Next is The Hanging Boyfriend at Serial Killer's House. This is the story of a guy and a girl who drove on the road on a rainy night in the 1970s. The car battery died so the boyfriend got out, knocked on the nearest door for assistance, and moments later, the girlfriend hears three thumps on the roof of the car. When she gets out to investigate, she sees her boyfriend hanging from a tree. To heighten the eerie factor in this story, the aforementioned house was once inhabited by notorious 1920 serial killer Albert Fish. The Leather Man and His Ghost Some locals have claimed to have seen the apparition of infamous Leather Man near Pop's Cave on Buckout Road. Pop's Cave was used during the Revolutionary War to store ammunition and it was the reported hangout for the Leather Man when he roamed through the area in the 1880s. Jules Bergelet was born in France and fell in love with a woman named Marguerite Larson, whose family owned the leather business there. Mr. Larson was against his daughter dating Jules, so Jules agreed to work for him for one year free of charge to prove himself himself worthy. 
If, after one year of free labor, Mr. Larson did not gain approval of Jules, then he would leave. A year later, Jules left France and headed to the U.S. by boat. He became known as the Leather Man and was first sighted in Connecticut in 1862. He was a wandering hobo who frequented the Buckout Woods before passing in March 1889 in Mount Pleasant, New York, after cancer ate away his mouth and jaw. The coroner's report indicated that he was 50 to 55 years old. The leather man was said to carry a bone comb and rosary wherever he went and also frequented a cave near the Sawmill River woods. Rumors still continue to circulate that Bergelet buried money in one of these two locations, and some have claimed that they have been confronted by either Mr. Leatherman's ghost or a Leatherman double. Next story is Mary's Lantern. Another Buckout Road urban legend that has survived for decades is about Mary's Lantern. Basically, there's a statue of Mary on someone's front lawn, and the legend was that if the statue was illuminated, then it was safe to proceed. And if the statue was not lit, then there was danger ahead. There are variations of this story, which include the statue crying, some form of stigmata, Another variation is of a different statue holding a lantern, which would be lit if it was safe and dimmed if it wasn't. The Lady in White A common story going around at the time was about the White Lady. Supposedly, this was the ghost of Mary Buckout, who had allegedly hanged herself from a tree in the woods up there someplace, and now haunted the area in the form of an all-white apparition. I had one friend who actually lived on Buckout Road, says the writer. She swore that her father, on several occasions, had seen the French doors leading to an outside porch that faced the woods fly open on their own even though they had been locked. He would then see a whitish-looking apparition of a woman float past him. She also claimed to have seen several occurrences of apparent grave robbery in the Buckout Family Cemetery, which was right on Buckout Road. Her house was almost right across the street from it. On several occasions, she claimed to have seen dug up graves, and various things left scattered around the dug up area. The next story is The Witches. Three X's mark the spot. For decades, there has been a story about three women who were accused of being witches and subsequently burned at the stake in the 1600s by locals in the area that is now Buckout Road. People have said to have felt their presence and seen apparitions in the Buckout Woods. The story is that three X's were marked on the road where these three women were killed, and if you drive over the X's, strange things will happen to you. The place on Buckout Road where the three X's were marked in spray paint was on the crest of the hill that overlooked the Buckout Baldwin Forest Family Cemetery. After the construction on the road a few years back, the hill was leveled and the X's were paved over and are no longer there. There is another story pertaining to a small house which was located in the center of a lake on Buckout Road where a witch was rumored to have lived. To determine whether or not three women were burned at the stake for witchcraft on Buckout Road, let's educate ourselves a bit 
on the subject of burning witches. It was once commonly believed that a witch's power could be nullified by burning her or by destroying her blood in a fire, hence the practice of burning at the stake. Just how many were burned? I have read estimates ranging from 1 to 9 million women burned at the stake throughout Europe. In 1484, Pope Innocent VIII issued a bill declaring the reality of witches and in initiated the accusation, torture, and execution of witches all over Europe. All costs of investigation, trial, and execution of the witches were borne by the accused or her relatives, including per diems for private detectives, torturers, and tar. The members of the tribunal for each witch burned received a bonus, and remaining property was divided between church and state. The first Anglo settlers in North America were the Puritans, who first arrived in 1620. The Puritans murdered and stole land from Native Americans. They burned at the stake in public forums for all to see anyone whose beliefs were different from their own. This included witches. When most people think of witch trials, they think of Salem, Massachusetts, where 19 were executed during the witch hysteria of 1692. None were burned at the stake. In 1664, Setauket, New York resident, Ralph Hall and his wife Mary were accused of witchcraft. In 1665, a trial was held, which was the first witch trial in New York State. Oddly enough, the place on Buckout Road, where the three women were said to have been burned at the stake for witchcraft, is where Buckout Road turns into Hall Avenue. Even more odd, a second woman who was tried in New York State for witchcraft was named Catherine Harrison, who resided in the town of Westchester. However, both the Halls and Catherine Harrison were released. The writer says, I have not been able to find any records pertaining to this alleged urban legend. The final legend Haunted Mansion Slaughterhouses, Buckout Mansion. To the best of my knowledge, this was the estate where John Buckout once lived. The site included the main house, a farmhouse, and several slaughterhouses in the nearby area. I randomly met a guy named Pete in 2002 who told me his father owned Buckout Mansion and was using it as an office for his fuel company. Pete had described the inside of the mansion as creepy, and I was denied entrance when I asked if I could visit the mansion with a camera. Pete also told me of an experience regarding him in the attic of the mansion and finding neckties from another century on the doorknobs and that a lot of murders happened in the house. He also told that a night watchman at the estate had some strange experiences, so I went there one night with several friends to speak to the guy. He told me he knew nothing and referred, to, referred me to a very good website about the area, my site. The mansion used to be located off of Buckout Road behind a locked gate. Behind the gate was a path which led to several abandoned slaughterhouses and a farmhouse. I have stopped on the road in front of the particular location on several occasions and heard unusual banging and chopping noises. Frequently, photographs of the mansion would come out with visible orbs. The mansion was torn down in 2003. Since then, a new house is up in its place, 
the last house at the end of a new road, old carriage house road off of Buckout Road. There was another story I had first heard about ten years ago regarding a babysitter who was working at a mansion on Buckout Road and began receiving strange phone calls. Upon calling the police, she was notified that the calls were coming from inside the house and the children she was sitting for were murdered. Oddly enough, this was the plot of the 1979 film, When a Stranger Calls. So those are all of the legends listed on the website that I have provided a link to. All credit for this goes to the website creator. But as for my personal experiences, unfortunately, nothing too exciting. I tried to go on to Old Buckout Road years ago when I was a teenager, of course, and we were pulled over and the police told us that we were trespassing and we had to leave. Fortunately, we didn't get into any legal trouble, but we were told that we couldn't come back as we were on private property. <laughs> That's all I have for you, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments.